Stick with me for a minute and let me tell you about a couple of trips and funny things that happened. And maybe it'll remind you of some of the things that happened to you and what a big kick out of happenings, if you will, from time to time. I got three little stories. Uh, I had a good friend. He's uh, passed on now. He got sick. Uh, but he was a fabulous fisherman and a good friend. And I, I have written about him in my latest book, which will be published pretty soon. Uh, this fellow's name was Al Brooks, and he was a great guy. And I guess the tribute to him was every time that we were going to have a dinner or friends over or a party or anything of that nature, uh, Al was first on the list. He and his wife, they were always first on the, the guest list. He was just a great guy, and uh, when he went fishing, uh, it, it thrilled him, and he was a tournament angler and a good one, but it thrilled him immensely if the fish were caught. It didn't matter if he caught them or his partner caught them. He was always thrilled about it. And Al, he was single, uh, and he lived, he didn't live uh, far away, but he lived in the woods, really, in a, in a relative's uh, broken down old house in the woods. And he had uh, the boat sat outside all the time. I've forgotten the name of that old boat. It was one of those first ones, like a Washita. And it sat out in the weather and everything. Uh, Al really didn't take care of everything, so to speak. So anyway, uh, we've got a tournament, and it's coming up at Lake Alatoona. And uh, it's a March tournament. It's cold. And Al gets up there about the same time I do, and he puts in, and I put in, and I go out, and I look for fish. And Al goes out, and he looks for fish. Well, he comes back in that af- late that afternoon, and he's white as a sheet. So I said, what has happened, man? Or he, he looks scared to death. Well, it went like this. He gets in the, in the water, puts the boat in, uh, takes the trailer, puts it away, the, all the traditional stuff, and he takes out across the lake. And he's fishing in here and there, and it's just it's raining. It's just a bad day. So he says, he starts to cut it short, so to speak, and I did too because the weather was so bad. I believe it was March. And he's on the way in, and where he lived, you know, the roaming cats and dogs and everything all around. Well, I was motoring across the lake as fast as that boat would go, and a cat was up underneath the console of the boat. And this cat jumps out from under the boat and digs its claws into Al's uh, rain suit that he had on, squalling, and it scares Al to death, of course, as you could well imagine. And Al grabs the cat by the neck and throws it in the lake, Uh, you know, and then tries to recover. Well, of course, he didn't leave the cat out in the lake. Uh, He went and scooped it up with its net and with his net and took it back and let it go at the ramp. He didn't know the cat's name or didn't. It wasn't a pet. It was just a cat that ended up under the console. So anyway, Al's white as a sheet, and he has a great story to tell. There's another. When Travis was uh, oh, 11 or 12 years old, he and a, a buddy, his name was Josh, uh, and they, in the, they lived out in the country, and they had ponds all around in the woods here and there that they could fish from in the afternoons. And uh, (laughs) Josh uh, and Travis are fishing in one pond, and they're walking to another. And they're just using a little, remember the beetle spin? You know, just a little lure spin, like a little, uh, a little bit like a road runner, but it was like a tiny little spinnerbait. So it's called a beetle spin. And they just, they don't have far to walk through the woods, and the trail is narrow. So Josh and Travis both just reel the beetle spin up to the tip of the rod, put your rod on the shoulder, and you walk through the woods. Well, Josh is out front, and they're walking briskly through the woods. And something gets uh, Travis's attention off to one side, and he says something or whatever, and Josh stops. And when Travis looks back facing forward again, that little beetle spin went into his mouth. And when he jerks or shouts or whatever, well, Josh, with his rod sitting on his shoulder, he swings around to see what the trouble is. And the hook goes in Travis's bottom lip and pulls drag off the reel, and the 
beetle spin gets buried in Travis's lip. And he screamed appropriately, I'm sure. I wasn't there. So here you go. You got this scene in the woods, beetle spin up past the barb in Travis's lip. Now they got there on four wheelers. So they cut the line, and Travis has the beetle spin in his lip, and Josh can't get it out. So they walk back to the four-wheelers, and they have a little mirror, a rear-view mirror on the four-wheeler. And I can't imagine this, but he swears it's true. Travis, with his needle-nose pliers, digs the hook out of his bottom lip. And then they go back and fish some more. Oh, Lord. Okay, one more. Just stick with me here, okay? I used to go up to... uh, Watts Bar Lake and fish behind the dam at Watts Bar Lake. And there were two or three boatloads of us. We made a trip out of it and stayed locally. And I had some clients with me, some car dealers and things of that nature. And you got to get this picture now. We're in the river below Watts Bar Dam. Water's boiling out through the gates. And I'm encouraging these fishermen to, we're using these big saltwater what do we call those things? Uh, long A's. With And I used to change the hooks on the long A so it wasn't saltwater hooks. They're more light wire hooks because we're fishing for stripers and bass and everything and anything that'll bite long in there, and the fishing's fabulous. So I'm the water's boiling out of the turnstiles, out of the gates, and uh, I've got a, a, fella, a friend out on the, the front of the boat and other anglers in the boat, and... I, I pull up to the one of the gates, and this fellow, he was, he's doing his best, but he's never done this before, and he's not what, what you would call a uh, an experienced angler, and he was too soft with it. He was just kind of easy pitching that little long A in around the, the doors. Well, smart Alec O'Neill, I grab my rod, uh, a, just a regular bait casting rod, medium action, and I say, some tell somebody else, grab the wheel of the boat here, grab the, the steering wheel, keep me up front, and I'll show you how to do this. Well, man, I torqued that rod up, and I really let that long A fly. And it hits me in the top of the head. I torqued the rod too much and tried to throw it too hard, and the long A hit me in the top of the head. Well, the front hooks dug a trench across my skull, uh, and th- that those hooks popped out, and the back hooks dug in. Oh, boy. Well, fishing temporarily stopped. But I, but I didn't backlash the reel. I want you to know that. So there I am, and thank goodness what happened to me was something I did, not what someone else did. It was all on O'Neill. And... Mike Mobley, the guide and friend that we were with, the, the two boats get over in calm water for a few minutes because I'm starting to bleed. And he cuts my hat off, uses some side cutters, and cuts the, the lure off of my head. And he says, I think I can get it out. And my question is, of course, I've got a towel around my neck now uh, because just to keep the blood from ruining my clothes. And his response was, I think I can get it out, but he said it's up past the barb. Well, that did it for me. I said, you're not going to dig that out of my head. I'm going to have to go to a doctor and let him get it out. So my friend Ken Sturdivant, I didn't figure I should drive to the doctor and go to the hospital. I believe it was a place called Sweetwater, Tennessee, I think was the name of the closest town. So Ken quit fishing and took me over and drove me to the hospital. And when I got in the truck, I'm sitting on the passenger side. When I got in the truck, I uh, I turned down the visor and look at it in the mirror. And I laugh and tell Ken, look, man, this thing is buried right in my head all the way up to the bar. Look at it. Ken says, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not looking. No, I'm just, you leave me alone. I'm just driving. So in about 15 miles, we uh, get to the hospital and go to the emergency room. And to shorten the story, because I'm already up past 10 minutes on this thing, the 
physician at hand or online or uh, in charge gives me a couple of Novocaine shots and opens that lure place up and gets the lure's hook out and sews up my head to the tune, I think, of 16 stitches. So those are the hookup uh, and frightening parts of the little stories to tell you today. Uh, I hope you enjoy them. At, uh, be careful driving the truck, okay? And tune in O'Neill Outside podcast whenever you get a chance. And then, too, when you do, make a note to t- telephone the radio show one morning, AM 750, Saturday mornings, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m., WSB and the SB Nation. It airs all over the country. Call O'Neill, and I'll see you soon.